In this presentation, I'm going to go over some of the IDE options that are available to students to choose what you would like to develop in for the remainder of the semester. A couple of things to point out, I do try to touch on all different operating systems. And also, there are some in-browser options that I'll talk about at the end here. First thing is for the Windows operating system. On all of the machines that are currently in the Open Labs at CCAC, you will have access to Notepad, Notepad++, and NetBeans. A couple of things to point out regarding these different types of packages here. Notepad very much is a straightforward, very little configuration um, type of editor. Comes installed with all Windows operating system versions. However, you don't have a lot of assistance as far as project control, uh, uploading to GitHub directly from inside of your editor, and also as well any type of color coding for your code or uh, any types of tips as far as completing activities. I do point out also, uh, one of the big players for a very long time was Adobe Dreamweaver. However, this is probably the only pay option on this page here. You have to pay for the Creative Cloud subscription. Now, having said that though, uh, this is more for multimedia communication students. If you are paying for uh, the Creative Cloud already due to your degree program, you will already have access to Dreamweaver. So if you are taking a course on Photoshop and Illustrator, because you're paying for the Creative Cloud, you will have access to Dreamweaver. Now, I'm actually going to jump over Adam a second and talk a little bit about NetBeans here. NetBeans is CCAC's choice as far as Java is concerned. You would have to do some extra installs as far as recognizing the HTML and CSS languages. Um, and some additional windows would have to be brought up to be able to do your editing personally not my first choice. I've had a lot of students who like both Sublime and Microsoft Visual Studio Code. To emphasize, this is not Microsoft Visual Studio. Code is a much simpler and more focused on lightweight scripting languages. So, however, though, if you are familiar with Microsoft Visual Studio, either working in C Sharp and Unity or other programming languages, the Visual Studio Code should actually feel very familiar to you. Which brings me to the last one. A lot of the videos you are going to see in this course, I like to use Atom. I heavily use GitHub along with, um, I just like the hackability of Atom. So if you're looking for an IDE where you will be able to kind of follow along with me, Atom is probably going to be your main choice. However, I encourage all students download them, play around with them, read their documentation, the ones that you are interested in. Again, really the one you'll probably leave out is Dreamweaver and just get a feel and see which one you like the best. You don't have to be an expert in all IDEs as far as web design and development goes, but you do kind of want to find your groove. Now, as far as Mac is concerned, you can use their uh, text edit, which is the default on the Mac OS systems. You'd have to do some preference changes. Um, again, Dreamweaver is available for Mac as well, but once again, you have to pay for it for that Creative Cloud. And Atom is available for Mac as well. This slide here, I just take you through as far as on the Mac, what you will need to change as far as your preferences if you do prefer to just use text editor. It's doable. However, you just need to make sure you have these preferences set up before you begin working or else your files are going to break. Lastly, uh, one of my lighter areas, I normally don't use Linux for any form of uh, development for uh, HTML and CSS, but evidently there are some options. If you have a Raspberry Pi, for instance, there is a Vim option that I provide a link to. Uh, if you are just running straight Linux as far as the OS is concerned, um, Sublime Text runs on it as well. The last thing to point out is yes, uh, in recent years, in-browser editors have kind of become a thing. Um, one nice thing about this is you don't have to download anything that you can work directly in the browser. 
honestly though, as far as version control, as far as being able to save and manage uh, your files, you lose a lot of control with the in-browser editors. It's great in a pinch if you know, you're working on a public computer and you need to edit something real quick, you can open it in one of these uh, browser editors. Uh, but on the flip side though, however, you are kind of sacrificing uh, nitty gritty controls here. I put them in here so you're aware of them. Our textbook, the Web Design Playground, does give you kind of a taste of in-browser editors and what they're capable of. The last thing too, that if you are looking for some of our things that I talked about here as far as links are concerned, you can actually access our LibGuide for CIT, where we have several code editors under the Websites and More tab that will give you direct links as well. However, again, earlier in under the Windows options for editors, I also included a lot of the links as the names as well. So again, your big goal as far as all of this goes is you want to make sure that you download and select an IDE that you're going to want to work with for the rest of the semester.